People are usually surprised to hear that I have just one global stock fund in my core portfolio. So in this video, we look at the considerations when choosing a good fund that you can stick with over the long term. And if you stay for the end of the video, I'll give you my opinion about which funds are best in various scenarios. This video is sponsored by Trading212, which is a UK commission-free investment platform. So let's look at one ETF to rule them all in a bit more detail. Now we said we were going to buy a fund which we're gonna stick with over the long term. If we are thinking long term, then it probably makes sense to have a lot of stocks in our portfolio. And when we're talking long term, we're talking about maybe a decade, 15 years, 20 years or more. And if that's the case, you can see that over long periods of time, stocks beat almost any other investment. So in the US over the last 150 years, on average, stocks have generated 9.1% per year. Bonds have just generated 4.6%. This is 10-year US treasuries. And if we look at gold, that's much lower, just 3.1%, which is not much more than inflation, which over this period has run at about 2.1% in the US. So how do you generate this return? Well, if you buy a global stock fund, it's very diversified. 55 or 60% of it will be these US stocks. And you'll also get the extra diversification of having other countries in your portfolio. And there's such huge competition in this space that these global stock funds have become completely commoditized. If we look at the definition of commoditized, it's really about a kind of product where there's so much competition that really the only thing which discriminates between products is price. And that's because the products themselves are almost interchangeable. So that begs the question, are global stock funds interchangeable? And the answer is that that's surprisingly close to being true. So are global stock funds all the same? If we look at recent history, we can plot three different global stock funds and overlay their prices. And here you can see I've got three funds. I've got SSAC, I've got ACWI and ACWL. Now in this case, all of these funds track the same index. So you'd absolutely expect these passive funds to have almost identical returns. So if you're tracking the same index, then yes, the returns will be the same and it's simply a matter of fee to choose which fund you like best. But what if you mix up your global funds so that you don't track the same index, so MSCI ACWI, the All Country World Index, is one global index. Another index might be the FTSE All World, but we'll also have some funds that exclude certain countries. So thrown into the mix here beside me, you can also see one fund which excludes the UK, and it only considers developed markets. So it has no emerging market stocks in it at all. And in fact, over this 13 year period, you can see the fund which did the best was one which happened to exclude the UK and emerging markets. But what you can also see is how similar these funds are. When one falls, all of them fall. And when one rises, all of the others rise in synchronization with it. There are some differences, but over this period since 2009, what you can see is if you annualize the returns, they all vary between 11% and 11.5%. So not a lot to choose between them. And frankly, I'd be happy with any of these. So what should we look for in a global equity fund? Well, one consideration is the currency in which the fund trades. If it's US dollars, which lots of global funds are, then you're going to have to convert your money into dollars on your brokerage platform. And often those fees that they charge for that conversion are not particularly competitive. So a much cheaper way to convert your money is to have the fund manager do it for you. So if they have a fund which trades in sterling, they're going to convert that into US dollars and all the other currencies for your global fund. And they can do that at much lower cost than we can. So having a fund which trades on the London Stock Exchange in sterling is often a sensible thing to do. Another consideration is whether it's an accumulation fund or an income fund. Accumulation means that the dividends are automatically reinvested back into the fund. So the price you can see includes those dividends. It gradually accrues that value over time, so you don't have to reinvest the money. If you have an income fund, these are usually used by retirees, then it'll pay money into your brokerage account, which you then choose whether to reinvest. Personally, I go for accumulation funds because there's less effort involved 
in reinvesting that money. It just means one less chore for my portfolio. When it comes to global funds, there's also a choice of whether you include just developed markets or also include emerging markets. Usually the split is roughly 90% to 10%, but if you are investing for the long term, maybe emerging markets will add a little bit of extra return. Also for the UK, some global equity funds exclude the UK. That's presumably to correct for the usual UK bias that you have for the rest of your portfolio. Then the final thing to think about is whether it's an exchange traded fund or a regular mutual fund or open-ended investment company as we call them in the UK. That's because on some low-cost investment platforms in the UK, they only allow you to trade and hold exchange traded funds. And that restricts the choice of what you can own in terms of global funds. So those are the things we'll be thinking about when we choose our best fund. Now, one of those low fee platforms here in the UK is Trading212. And it's a platform I've been using for some time for my fund portfolio. And they've been very innovative as well in terms of the features they offer. For example, they were the first to offer the combination of fractional shares and commission free trading. But now they've also introduced daily interest on your cash balances. This is not for an ISA account, it's for your invest account. And more recently, they've offered the ability to have currencies other than sterling in your invest account. Just to show you how this works, I've put £10 into my invest account. And if I look at my balance, you can see that it's currently in sterling. But let's say I wanted to convert that into dollars and then buy US stocks in dollars. Well, then I could just convert it and I'd pay the usual fee on trading 212, which is 0.15%. So if I convert this £10, you can see that the fee is going to be two cents. What's good about that is you can separate the choice about when you sell assets and when you convert the currency back to sterling. For example, I could keep my dollar balances and I could trade dollar stocks in dollars. And then whenever I want, I could sell those US stocks, some of them, and then convert the money back. Now, if you want, you can also deposit money in those other currencies or withdraw money in those other currencies. And of course, you earn daily interest in those foreign currencies at the going rate for that currency. So here you can see the three daily rates you can earn in those three different currencies, sterling, the dollar and the euro, as I make this video. Now, viewers of Pensioncraft get a special offer from Trading212 where you can claim a stock worth up to £100. And in order to get that, all you have to do is create a new account on Trading212, verify it, fund it with at least a pound, and then use the promo code, which is my first name, Romin, R-A-M-I-N. So given that the return on these global stock funds is very similar, to some extent they are commoditized, which are the ones that give us the lowest fees? Well, here are the 10 with the lowest fees, which I managed to find. And you can see they all vary in some way, whether they're income or accumulation, whether they're exchange traded funds or regular funds, but also the exact global coverage which they offer. The cheapest ones tend to be just developed markets. That's because those markets tend to be most liquid and the bid offer spread, the difference between the buying and selling price for their stocks tends to be very similar. So because you can trade the underlying stocks cheaply, the fund manager will pass on that lower fee to you. Including emerging markets usually increases the fee because those markets tend to be less liquid. So the top five funds, the top five cheapest funds, are the ones which are all from developed markets. The sixth one excludes the UK, which some people might want, some people might not. But as I say, it's not particularly important because the UK only constitutes 4% of global equity. The lowest fee fund, which includes emerging markets on this list, is actually not an exchange traded fund. It's the HSBC FTSE All World Tracker. Now, I mentioned that I've just got one global stock fund in my portfolio, my core portfolio. You're probably wondering which one it is which one is my precious, if we're going to use the Lord of the Rings mythology? Well, it's the one which is actually third from the bottom of the list. It's a Vanguard FTSE Developed World X UK fund. How did I choose it? Well, Vanguard does restrict the funds which you can choose to only ones which they manage. It's pretty much the only UK platform which does that. 
Let me just show you the selection process by which I found it. I select Vanguard's full list of funds here, and then at the top of the list I'll choose building my own portfolio, and I'll choose the asset class for stocks, which is called equities. And then in the region filter, I'll choose global. Management type, I'll choose passive, which is actually what they call an index fund. And because I don't want to fiddle around reinvesting the dividends, I chose an accumulation share class. Now that set of filters on Vanguard restricts me to just five funds. And I simply chose the one with the lowest fees. And that was this FTSE Developed World XUK fund. Did I want to exclude emerging markets? Well, not really. It was just the cheapest fund which gave me global equity exposure. You'll also be restricted if you're on a UK exchange traded fund only platform. And that would include platforms such as Trading212 in the UK, which is currently ETF only. And you can see that that halves the size of our investment universe from 10 funds, which were very cheap, to five funds, which are very cheap. But what's exciting is that there's been a recent new issue of an ETF, which gives you global equity exposure, including emerging markets. And this is the Invesco FTSE All World Tracker. Now this was only issued in June of 2023, so there isn't much data available on it. The price series that you'll see for it is very short. And if you look at its fact sheet, you can see that any price comparisons are restricted because it hasn't been around long. But you know which index it's tracking, so you know what returns it's gonna give you. One source of confusion is that there are two versions of the fund. If you buy the one with ticker FWRA, it'll trade in US dollars. That means you'll have to pay for the currency conversion. If you trade the version called FWRG, which also trades on the London Stock Exchange, that trades in sterling. And that means that Invesco will do the currency conversion for you more cheaply, probably. But this ticks a lot of my boxes. For example, it's an accumulation fund, you don't have to reinvest the dividends, and you can get that sterling denominated version of it. And it gives you global equity exposure. Now, why can't Vanguard, like they do in the US, offer a low cost global fund, which includes emerging markets? This is my angry face, Vanguard. Please sort yourself out. So I think the best choice of fund here depends on what kind of platform you're on. If you're restricted by Vanguard, then you'd probably go for the fund I went for. If you're on an ETF only broker or platform in the UK, you'd probably go for PRIW, which is the cheapest fund, which is an income fund. You're gonna to have to reinvest the dividends. Or if you want an accumulation fund, then I think that Fidelity one is definitely one to consider. The ticker for that, the one that trades in sterling, is FWRG. Or if you don't mind excluding emerging markets, you can get a cheaper ETF, which is LCWL. That's the Lixor Core MSCI World Fund. If you're not on an ETF-only platform and you're not on Vanguard, then I think probably one of the best accumulation funds, which is truly global, is the one from HSBC. This is not an ETF. It's the HSBC FTSE All World fund tracker and the class you want is probably C. Your platform will probably offer that share class. But that trades in sterling. It's an accumulation fund, so you'd have to reinvest the dividends. So I think that's definitely a good choice. But of course, a non-ETF only platform will allow you to choose many of these funds. So it really depends on whether you want the income to be reinvested. And secondly, whether you want to include emerging markets, which probably will affect the long-term returns over decades. So I hope that's helped you make a choice about which fund would make sense for you and which one would probably be the best one to stick with long term. Personally, I think it's one of the best things I ever did to restrict my fund choice to just one fund, because I can do a lot less damage to my portfolio without having to worry about things like asset allocation, regional allocation, or rebalancing. It's just made my life a lot easier. So although you may not come up with the same fund choice as I came up with, I hope this helps you in your search for your own precious. And, as always, thank you for listening.